Hello everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio and in today's video I'm going to show you how I painted the ornaments in this blast from the past painting I did years ago and decided to do it again so I could video it for my online students. If you would like to watch this and other painting videos in real time so you can paint along with me while I explain my process, join my Patreon and you will gain instant access to a growing library of over 30 in-depth tutorials complete with downloadable reference photo tracing and supply list. Either way, be be sure to subscribe as I upload new videos every week. Please show me some YouTube algorithm love by watching until the end, leaving me a comment or even better, a question and like this video. By the way, at the time of this taping, this painting is not done. Story of my life. <laughs> but the ornaments are pretty much done, so I thought I could at least show you how I did them. So let's get started. So the first thing that I wanted to do once I got my drawing down was really get those ornaments perfectly round. So I used a compass and note, my compass is quite jerry rigged. So I do not recommend using a jerry rigged compass. And I had a really hard time actually using this. And another thing that you could use is just find household items that are round that are the right size and trace them. So you can do that. So uh, maybe get creative with how you get your circles around, but just figure out a way to get them around. A compass is a great way to do it, especially if you have a fully functioning one, unlike myself. <laughs> Shall we watch me wobble through this a little bit? By the way, when you do join my Patreon, that is one of the things that I share is my highs and lows as an artist so you can learn from my mistakes. And I make a lot of them, trust me. Uh, also, I did a little bit of erasing just to get rid of the lines. And here is the brush I'm going to use to apply masking. And oh, that's my eraser, by the way. And the brush that I use has a really tiny little point. It's like a size zero script type brush. I recommend using an old brush you don't care about. And I first scrub my wet paintbrush in soap and then dip it in the masking. So the masking doesn't get stuck in my bristles, but just a little tip to you guys. If you do get masking dried in your bristles, I've heard Goo Gone will help. Okay, so here I'm applying masking to the glittery what's going to be the glittery ornament. So I put just a, a bunch of little dots everywhere, little tiny dots of masking, lots and lots and lots of them because I wanted this ball to look really glittery. I'm also going to use the masking in the other two ornaments that aren't glittery. They're more kind of a matte finish, but I don't really care if I capture that matte finish look or not. Uh, I just want them to have the color pops in there to really enhance my painting. But I am putting a few little highlights as if the light is hitting them in a few high points of the ornament. So I put bigger bits of masking to make it look like there's larger areas of light hitting the top of them. And I'm just going to speed it up, finish up my masking here. I'm putting masking on the cat. I forgot to mask out the whiskers. I just realized that when I woke up this morning. <laughs> so I'll have to use gel pen. But um, I also masked those little beads. And I'm not going to cover the beads in this tutorial, but basically you just paint them the same way you do the ornaments, although they have a much larger light area. So I put a pretty large dot of masking in the middle of them. And now I'm sprinkling masking all over the whole thing just to give it a sparkly look at the very end of the painting. But you won't be able to see that until I take the masking off at the very end, which I don't think I'm going to get there in this video <laughs> because the painting is still not done. And I'm trying to get as much out to you guys Christmas wise as I can before Christmas. And uh, my son got um, quarantined. So I'm, my work has gotten impacted significantly. So um, here I am just paint, painting in the boughs of the tree. I used a mix of ultramarine blue, Holbein Oriolan. I used some Windsor green gold in there for the greens. I mix my greens for the most part and usually add a dash of red to make them look more natural. And this cat is a little Siamese cat, so she's got those pretty blue eyes. And I used cobalt blue and indigo for her eyes, for those of you who are curious. All right, I'm gonna speed up my footage now so this video doesn't get too long, but right now I'm just adding some clear water. And what I do is add kind of puddling 
amount of water and then I wring out my brush and kind of use it like a sponge to sop up the water and spread everything around so everything is nice and evenly distributed throughout the area that I want to paint which is the round circle part of the ornament. So that's what you see me doing and it's actually uh, as time consuming as applying the paint because I want to paint carefully around the top of the ornament where the um, connector little doohickey thing is. And then I go in with some naphthol red by M. Graham, which M. Graham is the only paint manufacturer that actually uses this particular pigment of red. So it's a beautiful red and it has beautiful diffusion. So by the way, if you haven't seen my video about diffusion yet, I'll link it here. And I use that diffusion quality to help the paint kind of paint itself and spread out evenly across this moist area and painting carefully around the middle where I want it to be lighter and then going in with a little bit of blue added to my mix around the edges so that it gives it its three dimensional quality. And now you can also really see where I put that masking where those little four or five glints are up in the upper left qu quadrant of the ornament. And I'm working as much as I can while this is wet to get all the variety of values and hues, hues being color, value being lightness and darkness, and trying to get the edges really as dark as I possibly can in this first go. And the middle of the ornament is the um, red of the Christmas ornament. So that's its actual color. And then that white area in the middle is where there's a bunch of reflections. And here I'm just adding a little bit of water and kind of joining all that together. So what you want to do as this dries is babysit it. You can add some dark paints on the outer periphery. You can drop in more red like I'm doing here. And you can wring out your brush, put clear water, and then wring it out and then use it like a sponge to lift up some color if parts of the ornament get too dark. All right, now we'll work on these other ornaments up here and I'm gonna use a lot of dry brush technique on the glittery ball, but let's see what ornament I'm gonna work on first here. All right, I'm gonna work on the little green one. I'm again getting the whole ornament moist painting carefully around the edges. Sometimes you might want to move your painting around so you can see the edge you're painting up to so that you get an accurate um, edge and you don't uh, go over the boundary of the ornament. And here I'm putting in some Windsor green gold and then this lighter um, yellow green that I'm putting in now is called Permanent Green Light Zero by Daniel Smith, I believe. It's either Daniel Smith or Holbein but it's a really pretty young looking green and it's the perfect color for this ornament. So I'm carefully painting around the boundaries and you'll notice one thing that I do is I get the yellow in the upper part of the ornament, which is a reflection from the yellow glittery ornament above it. So that also just adds interest to have a variety of colors and values in each ornament. So you want to try to get all the values, light, medium, and dark, and you want at least two different colors in your ornament just to make it look more interesting and realistic. And look at the ornament in the reference photo. It has yellow and green and very dark edges, especially in the upper right quadrant. quadrant. So you want to make sure that you get that correct. Here I'm going in with some cooler green, which means I added blue to it and it's a little darker too for the shadowed side of the ornament and that's really what's going to give your ornament that three-dimensional dimen spherical property instead of it looking like a flat pancake. Later on I'll go in and I'll darken the edges even more to make it even look rounder. And here are some watercolor paints I got from Matza Watercolor. She is a seller on Etsy that makes her own homemade watercolor paint. She adds shimmer and these are perfect for this project. And I'm gonna use the yellow up here on this upper ornament right here. And I'm using the edge of my brush and I'm using a dry brush technique, which is 
when you paint onto dry paper and you don't have a lot of water in your brush at all, just enough to activate the paint. And what you can do is load up your brush with paint and then blot it, especially the heel of the brush on your paper towel and then paint with the edge of your paintbrush and it'll give you that nice little nubbly glittery effect. And then I splayed my brush a little bit so that I just get little speckles when I gently, very gently touch it just with the tips of that splayed out brush with the bristles spl splayed out. And I used a grayer color notice. And if you look in the reference photo, there is grayer sparkles in that upper right quadrant that is the shadow of this ornament. And getting that in is really important to help make your Christmas ornament look spherical and three-dimensional in space. So I'm putting a lot more color and value along the edges and keeping the round um, or the middle part, which is catching more light, lighter. And here I go in with a second layer of some grayed down yellow. I can gray down my yellow by adding this brown color that I had in the set already, which so that made it easy for me. But if you don't have that color, what you would do is add a little bit of blue, add a little bit of purple, just a little bit to gray down your yellow. To gray down any color, just look across the color wheel to its complementary color and add a little bit of the complementary color to gray it down, which yellow and purple are complementary colors. So add a little purple to your yellow and you'll get a grayed down yellow, but just a little bit. It's still mostly yellow with a little tiny bitch, <laughs> bitch, a little bit of, <laughs> gosh. Anyway, uh, a little bit of purple added. And here I am working on the cat's eye, putting in some details and I sped this up 4,000% because I don't want it to take up a bunch of time, but I just thought you guys might enjoy seeing a little bit of, of my process of painting the Christmas tree. If I can, you guys, I will try to get more of this footage available to you guys as a tutorial for Christmas. Uh, my son is home because his whole class has been quarantined. So um, it's, it's gonna be harder for me to get videos out to you guys this week. My videos take much longer to make than the actual painting. So I'm just trying as much as I can. And notice how I put gray in the background around those ornaments to help pop out the colors. All right, here I am removing my masking because I've got most of the color in place. That's when you know you can remove your masking. You remove it when you've got most of the color uh, in place and it's dark enough so that you don't really need to add much color over that masking. And that's the purpose of masking. It saves the white of your paper. Here is my size two stiff scrubber by Royal and Langnickel. It's a scrubber and I use this in almost every single painting. I'm gonna use it to soften the edges and softening the edges is so important in a painting. It really adds a dreamy quality. Be sure to check out my video I made about how to paint soft edges. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this article or video to talk about why you want to soften edges, but it just makes the painting look more aesthetically pleasing to have some soft edges and some hard edges. So I'm scrubbing right over the edge of that ornament and blending it a little bit with the cat. And I'm also scrubbing out some of the highlights below those white, um, very white highlights that I saved from the masking. And if you look at the reference photo, you'll see those soft little highlights that aren't perfectly white, they're soft. And a scrubber is the perfect tool to get these soft effects. And what I'm doing is I'm moistening my scrubber with water a little bit and then placing it in the middle of that white highlight and then just kind of jiggling it so that I don't get rid of my pure white, but I soften the edges that was, there's hard edges that are always created by masking. So you almost always wanna soften the edges. Here you can really see me do it well with this green ornament. You almost always wanna soften anything that you um, masked out. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I always soften the areas created by masking after I remove the masking. So here you see how I'm jiggling my scrubber uh, in those highlighted areas, softening the edges, softening a lot of the edges on the ornaments. 
I really love that soft edge between the red ornament and the cat bow. I really think that makes it look dreamy and um, very appealing. And here I'm gonna, going in with my white gel pen. I get it activated by writing on my hand there and then I'm adding a, a bit extra glitter to everything. And that really finishes off the look of these ornaments and you don't wanna overdo it. It's just like jewelry. You don't wanna to put too much. This is what I call the jewelry in the painting. This tiny little details you put in the end that really make your painting go to the next level. And just like jewelry, you don't want too much, but you do want a touch of jewelry to make your painting look special. And that's true with these ornaments, just putting a few little refining details, getting everything just right so that they really look realistic. And here I'm just putting in tiny little details on the that top, that um, ornament topper here on this red ornament, getting that tiny little detail in with a script brush size zero royal and lang nickel size zero script brush before i was using a size eight round royal and lang nickel brush by the way to paint most of the ornaments and natural hair brushes that's another advantage of natural hair brushes you can splay their bristles whereas with a lot of synthetic brushes, they don't splay out very well. And here I'm scrubbing this edge between the ornament and scrubbing it right into the cat's side of the cat's face to make them kind of melt together. And it just makes it look more appealing and soft and in some way more realistic because the way human vision works is we have peripheral vision and that peripheral vision, our brain is wired to interpret that. And it's a soft vision but your brain likes to have that kind of aspect in its sights because then your brain can interpret it and it just somehow makes it more appealing in a painting to have soft edges and maybe it's because of how the brain works with peripheral peripheral vision but to have a combination of hard edges and soft edges is key to making your painting the next level professional look look at professional paintings that are really appealing, you'll see they have soft edges. All right, now everything's really dry and I'm going in with some darker paint about milk consistency. And if you haven't seen that video about tea, milk and cream consistency, it's in my watercolor basics playlist. So be sure to check that out. But I'm using about milk consistency, darker paint, which means I've added more blue. It's cooler, it's in the shadows. Usually shadows are cooler, not always, but usually. And then I go in with even darker cream consistency and to soften the edge that I just painted because I am painting on dry paper, which makes hard edges. I blot at it with the tip of my fingernail to just, or my finger pad, just to mush it just a little bit to soften it up. See, I'm mushing there with my finger and look how nice those edges look nice and soft. That's what you want. It's all about the edges, uh, not all about it, but it's so important. And these ornaments, that's very true with ornaments to have uh, it, they're more appealing if some of their edges are hard and some of their edges are softer. And I'm trying to show you the shimmer in that yellow gold paint. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the shimmer is there because I use those beautiful watercolors by Matza. So be sure to check out my Matza's watercolor um, tutorial that I did. All right, thanks you guys so much for tuning in and, and joining me on this Christmas video tutorial. I'll try to get more out to you guys before Christmas. I'll definitely have a new video next week. I'm not sure which one it will be, but it will be there. I do at least one new video every week and sometimes more. So be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.